Let me give a special shout out to Audley, my friend in England who inspired me to do this video. We had some critical conversation and I went on a research to find out more about Thomas Thistlewood. Hello, thanks for joining me. I want to take you on a journey this afternoon or this evening, wherever you are. And I want to tell you about a section of history that has somewhat been hidden. Let's not forget, in our schools, we were taught that slaves were seasoned to work on the plantation, which simply meant they were broken into the system by being beaten. But let me get this straight. What Thomas Tissabo did to the slaves, you will never imagine. And you could never imagine that someone could have done that to another human being. Stay around as I explore and build a timeline to his wickedness in the Caribbean. Never forget the name Thomas Tissabod because he created a dose that you could never imagine, a dose that was given to slaves. Listen and be informed. Thomas was born in 1721 in England. Seeking wealth in 1750, he decided to journey to the colony of Jamaica and settle in a place called Egypt in Westmoreland. He worked there as an overseer on two slave plantations. An overseer is someone who directs the slaves on their daily activities. He bought his first slave in 1756 and he also purchased land. One of Thomas's key attributes was his ability to document his daily activities and he did so in great detail for over 30 years. It is estimated that his diary has over 10,000 pages. As I go more in depth in finding more about Thomas Tisselwood, I realize that his section of history, that his contribution to the wickedness has been somewhat hidden from public view. Let me go on. I can't comprehend why Thomas's work is not easily accessible in digital form so everyone can view the work. In his diary entries, we can establish that he had a sadistic way of life and he had a strong appetite for enslaved women. On analysis of his diary entries, it is estimated that he had over 3,800 sexual acts with over 138 women in 36 years in Jamaica. Based on the record, he seemed to have had a likeness to one slave called Feba. Tisselwood and other plantation owners believed that having sex with enslaved women would show white men's dominance over the slaves, of course. As a matter of fact, he started this when he was an overseer. He raped, beat, and murdered slaves. So when he got his own slaves, the treatment was not different, but more severe. Follow me again. Tisselwood was also known to have tied up his slaves, laced their bodies with molasses, and exposed the slave to mosquitoes and flies all night. Just imagine that. However, this punishment was far from what you could imagine. Tessawood invented the Derby's dose. Yes, because this dose represents the lack of respect for human dignity. If a slave did something that Thomas thought was wrong, he would have the slave beaten, then lime juice thrown into the wound, and then the slave would be tied up. From Tessawood's perspective, this punishment was not enough. So what he had other slaves do was to grab the slave who had committed that offense, tie the slave up in a position that would allow another slave to defecate in that slave's mouth. Of course, place their own feces, their body waste into the other slave's mouth. And after that, the slave who had received the feces into their mouth had their mouth shut and gagged for four to five hours. And as a matter of fact, we all know if your mouth is gagged with an object or any item within, you are forced to swallow. That is very humiliating. Yes, Thomas Tissawood must be known for what he did to black people in the Caribbean. And this story must be told for generations to understand the impact of slavery, its psychological impact on those who were 
victims of such treatment. His line of punishment did not stop there. There are other things. Stay around as I continue to build the storyline regarding the wickedness of Thomas Tisselwood. Thomas Tisselwood also allowed slaves to urinate on other slaves in their eyes and in their mouths for punishment. He flogged slaves for just waking him up in the night. In another entry he made, he flogged two slaves for eating cassava that was prepared badly. He was just upset that they would not be able to work the following morning, although they almost died. One slave that seemed to have received so many doses of beaten seemed to have been Lincoln. His name is mentioned countless times in various diary entries. But let me say that slaves found ways to deal with Thomas Tisselwood in a passive way. As a matter of fact, I called it passive resistance and this is also reflected in our history books. They pretended to be ill. They ran away from Thomas. As a matter of fact, they sometimes planted crops incorrectly. Slaves will also cause injury to the plantation animals. They would damage or lose the tools for the plantation. These were just some of the many strategies employed by slaves to ensure that they resisted this evil institution. However, the greatest resistance ever seen by Tisselwood was Taki's rebellion or revolt. According to Tisselwood's diary, militia forces, troops, and maroons joined together to attack Taki's forces. The diary entry states that Taki was shot and killed by Davy, a maroon sharpshooter. From Tisselwood's perspective, he believed that Obio had a vital part to play in Taki's resistance. Yes, and as a matter of fact, in that year, Obio was banned. Taki, yes, he died in the attack, but we must understand the struggles of the black people as they fought to resist individuals like Tisselwood. While Thomas Tisselwood did not indicate that he had anything to do with the punishment that was leveled at the slaves who were caught in the resistance, let me say he was also a part of the system. Those slaves who were caught were hanged on trees and many of them as a matter of fact were placed on the ground and their hands shackled. After they were shackled, of course, their feet were set ablaze and they would watch their feet burn into ash. And then they would take the hand on and the hand would start to burn. And of course, that led to the eventual death of the slave. We should not try to hide the history. We should highlight the history. Please be aware that I've placed some links that you can read the history that I've outlined here and learn more. Because I think it's so important that we learn together because many of these things that I've mentioned today would not have been revealed in our history books but sit on a shelf in one of these big libraries across the United States and in England. We must make the information accessible to every Jamaican and individuals across the Caribbean. Now you see from what I've outlined here, Thomas Tessewood should go down in history as one of the wickedest persons as it relates to human beings. Yes, Slaves were psychologically damaged by his ordeal. Notwithstanding, we had individuals who continued to struggle on. We should not avoid knowing our history. Rather, we should take time to learn because the history that we learn today will guide our future. The struggle continues, the struggle is real because what Thomas Tisselwood did is now being found out by other academics across the world. Let's not forget the reality of slavery and what they fought for and what we are enjoying is a part of their legacy as individuals who fought for freedom. Thanks for joining me.